In this section, we will be studying mutations. Mutations are simply changes in the DNA sequence. We will see that there are many causes and effects to mutations. Mutations can be caused by many things around us, including chemicals and radiation. We can put the causes of mutations into three major categories. The first category is spontaneous mutations. These are the ones that are beyond our control. These are mistakes made during replication. Many of these mistakes are actually repaired. Eukaryotic cells have machinery and enzymes that are able to proofread the DNA and repair much of the damage. However, some mutations are missed and they're beyond our control because we can't control the machinery of replication. Another cause of mutations is radiation. There are many types of radiation that can cause damage to the DNA. X-rays and ultraviolet are two of the most common. This occurs when energy from the radiation disrupts the atomic structure, often removing electrons, disrupting bonds, and breaking chromosomes. One example of radiation causing mutations is when a person gets a skin cancer. These cancers are caused by mutations in the DNA that cause cells to have other problems. The third cause of mutations is chemicals. Chemicals in the environment around us can often cause damage to our DNA. This includes chemicals in cigarettes and smog, pesticides, or other dangerous substances in the environment. Again, these chemicals interact with the DNA and cause damage to its molecular structure. The results of mutations are generally fatal to the cell or to the organism. Sometimes mutations are neutral, particularly if that change has occurred in the junk DNA or non-coding regions. Rarely we get a positive mutation, one that may be a source of new genetic variations. If a mutation occurs in a gene, we see that there are changes in the structure and the function of the proteins that are produced. Some of the worst results of mutation are things like cancer, death, deformities. We can see that they can result in physical deformities and mutations as well. At the bottom we see two fruit flies, one with large normal eyes and one with small mutated eyes. That mutant fly does not see very well. We also see mutations as the cause of abnormal anatomical structures, sometimes as drastic as two-headedness. Some mutations are neutral if they are in the junk DNA rather than in the genes. Because it's in the junk, there is no effect on the phenotype. The last result of mutations sometimes results in a source of variability in a population. Mutations can sometimes lead to new alleles or variations within a gene. For example, with these birds, we see that most of the population is green. One small change or mutation can result in a blue individual. This trait may be beneficial and may lead to that trait being passed on. Again, this is a very rare occurrence. Generally, mutations are either detrimental or neutral. There are many types of mutations that we see in the DNA sequence. Point mutations are a small change involving one base in the DNA sequence. We are going to look at three types of point mutations. The first type of point mutation is a nucleotide substitution. This is when one base is substituted for a different base. So in this example, we have a normal sequence of DNA. We see that in the substitution or the mutated version, there is a single base that has been replaced by a different base. The result of this nucleotide substitution is often a single change in the protein structure. We may have one amino acid that gets switched out. This is not to say that point mutations or substitutions are not a big deal. One change in the nucleotide sequence and one change in the amino acid sequence can have massive effects on the overall protein. A change in the primary structure of a protein may alter 
the secondary and tertiary structures as well. Another type of point mutation is nucleotide addition or insertion. This is when one nucleotide is added to the sequence. Again, here we have a normal strand of DNA. We see here that one nucleotide, the red A, has been added. Nucleotide insertions often cause more changes in the protein than a substitution does. We see here that with the insertion of one nucleotide, there are actually several changes in the protein structure. This is a result of a frame shift mutation. A frame shift mutation is when there is a change in the reading frame. An insertion can cause this. Remember that DNA and RNA are read in three letter words called codons. If you insert a single base into the sequence, you're going to change each of the subsequent codons. Our third type of point mutation is a nucleotide deletion. This is when one nucleotide is removed from the sequence, causing another frame shift mutation. Here again, we see a normal strand of DNA. With the removal of one base, we again change the subsequent codons. This will result in a change in many nucleotides. In this example, we remove a single base out of the DNA sequence. Every codon after that is altered, which means that every amino acid uh, translated from those codons will also be different. Some mutations are on a larger scale than a single base. Chromosomal aberrations are large changes to a chromosome. Genes or chunks of the chromosome are damaged or moved around. One type of chromosomal aberration is a gene deletion. This is when an entire gene gets deleted from the chromosome. This can be detrimental because it may remove an important trait or an important protein that the organism needs to survive. Another problem can be gene relocation. If the gene is moved to a new location on the chromosome, there are sometimes problems for transcription to occur. Another type of chromosomal aberration is gene duplication. This is when a gene is copied so that the chromosome has two or more identical genes. This may or may not be a problem. Sometimes having two genes is not an issue. Sometimes it can make too much of a particular protein, which can actually cause issues as well. Remember, a change in the DNA doesn't stop there. When we damage the DNA sequence or alter it, that will be transcribed to the mRNA. After that, the change will be translated to the proteins. This can result in non-functioning proteins, which is a major problem and often results in diseases and disorders. Let's take a moment to review. Which of the following is an example of an insertion or addition mutation? Read the normal RNA strand and look for the option that has an insertion. Pause the video for a moment if you need more time to think. Answer C is the correct answer. We can tell this easily because there is an extra letter sticking off at the end. Because this segment of RNA is not the same length as the normal RNA, we know that one letter or one nucleotide has been added. Here's another review question. Take a moment to figure out the answer. The correct answer is all of the above. Remember, if the mutation occurs within a gene, it can have a negative effect producing a non-functioning protein. If the mutation is in the junk DNA, it may have a neutral effect on genes. Rarely we can have a beneficial change in the gene that may produce a new allele useful to that organism. In the next part, we're going to look at how faulty genes can code for faulty e enzymes leading to sickness. A single difference in the DNA can result in many forms of sickness and diseases. We're going to examine two specific examples, the fast flush effect and sickle cell anemia. In our first scenario, we have a group of friends going out for dinner. 
Isabella joins her friends in sipping wine during a dinner party. As the meal progresses, her companions become tipsy. Their conversation is light and their moods relaxed. They refill their glasses, reveling in a little buzz. Not so for Isabella. Before her first glass is empty, she experiences a fast flush response. Her face turns crimson, her heart begins to race, and her head starts to pound. Worse still, she soon feels the need to vomit. How can people respond so differently to alcohol? It comes down to a difference in a single pair of bases in the DNA, a difference that can dramatically influence a person's behavior, digestion, respiration, and general ability to function. The single base pair change leads to the production of a non-functional enzyme, and the lack of a functional version of this enzyme leads to physical illness. When we consume alcohol, our bodies start a two-step process in which the alcohol mo molecules are first converted from their intoxicating form into an intermediate molecule. The intermediate is toxic, but is quickly broken down in the second step into a non-toxic molecule that can be easily disposed of. Each of the two steps is made possible by a specific enzyme whose assembly instructions are coded for in the DNA. Fast flush people, like Isabella, complete the first step of the breakdown of alcohol, but cannot complete the breakdown because they carry defective genetic instructions for making aldehyde dehydrogenase, the enzyme that makes it possible for the second step of this process to occur. We see that in fast flushers, the first process occurs fine. Alcohol is easily broken down into a toxic chemical. As time goes on, that toxic molecule builds up, and it cannot be further broken down due to the non-functional enzyme in their body. This results in the fl fast flush response, where Isabella starts to feel sick and flushed. If Isabella continues to drink, she may accumulate so much of the toxic chemical that it could become fatal. Another example of a single point mutation that causes a huge problem is sickle cell anemia. We see that there is a single base substitution in the DNA of people with sickle cell anemia. That one change causes a change in the amino acid sequence. That mutant protein creates these sickled red blood cells. The half moon shaped red blood cells are not as good at doing their job. They do not transport as much oxygen and they often cause clots in the blood vessels of people with sickle cell anemia. These are two examples of how one small change in the DNA can cause huge problems. In this video, we defined mutations. We looked at different causes and results, as well as different types of mutations. We also looked at two examples of diseases that can be caused by small substitution mutations.